Hello and welcome to episode 255 of the Casual Try Hard Podcast. I'm Brian. And I'm James. Remember when December used to be like slow and there wasn't much to talk about because yeah. it's the end of the year? Nothing happened. Wizards is off for the month, so they go dark yeah. until Christmas when we get a singular card from the next upcoming set. Yeah. No mas. No. <laughs> they're, they're, they're apparently, we're doing bands. We're making new formats for us to neglect. Yeah. Um, they, they <laughs> did spoilers for the keeps next. on rolling. Yeah. The, you would think they would run out of stuff to like hype people up with. But well, then they just got to make more products. <laughs> they do. If we, if we don't have a release to talk about every Monday and Wednesday, we are not making enough sets. <laughs> chop, chop. Get back in there, Gavin. That's right. Get to I it. I just want to go home and see my family. No, we need more <laughs> products, Gavin. Um, so, yeah, so we're, we got a bunch to talk about today. They've secretly replaced Morrow's Coke stash with powdered beans. <laughs> powdered beans. Ah, <laughs> ah, uh, uh, it burns. Uh, uh. Very pinchy. If you want more of the good stuff, you gotta, you gotta make us into the product. <laughs> That's right. What if we put video game characters from the 90s on cards? <laughs> The nerds at the disposable income won't be able to help themselves. You mentioned that while we were getting ready to record the episode. I didn't see that, so. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we'll have time today, but may maybe we'll get to that at the end of the episode. So, um, if you want to reach out to us on, uh, uh, on social media to, I don't know, talk about what video game characters you would like to have on, uh, your, uh, your magic cards or anything else, uh, Presumably, we will hit the point where they like unchain everyone in R and D from their desks and let them go home <laughs> for a couple of weeks. Presumably. So they might slow down on stuff, but maybe not. They might just be like, "Yo, let's just do this forever." Yolo. Um. Yeah. So if you want to do that, um, if you want to say, "Hey," um, you can get that. Get us on Facebook, on a Discord, on a X email all those links are in the description say hey let us know what you want us to talk about yeah because we're here for the people that's right so if there was a singular video game character from your childhood that you would like to see in magic card form what would it be i mean they might already be doing it like i played a lot of final fantasy 7 yeah like cloud or tifa yeah uh i don't know that's your answer Barrett. Yeah, yeah, probably. Some, like, something Final Fantasy Universe. I think so. Or, um, uh, gosh, what is it called? You could have, like, the airship as, like, a vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, Setzer. Setzer, <laughs> you'd have to roll dice, right? It has to be random. Yeah. You're, you're talking to someone who is unreasonably excited for the end of February when they release the next part of the Final Fantasy VII remake. And I get Vincent, I get some vampire action. <laughs> mm, let's go. I think uh I think I think Clippy would make a good magic card. Clippy? Yeah. That's a video game character. <laughs> like what game like what sad childhood where you're just like, ooh, like I'm just gonna learn how to type you on a help blank with my screen. Spreadsheets. <laughs> Do you need help with your spreadsheet? Yes, Clippy, but not from you. <laughs> not from you, buddy. I didn't say it was a good video game character. I just said it would make a I, good magic card. There hey, is a. It looks uh, like you need help with this combat. Turn your creatures sideways. <laughs> nice. There's a. Math uh, is for blockers. Uh, what is her name? There's a TikTok creator who, um, she she does like kind of like raps about like different uh like IP. She's done like a Star Trek rap, a Star Wars rap. Yeah. But she has this thing where. She plays Siri, Alexa, and like the other like a Chat GPT. Yeah, and uh, um, they were all mad at uh, Chat GPT for maybe putting them out of business. Oh. <laughs> and uh, Clippy volunteered to go help them to go talk to Chat GPT and learn about it. But we just learned that Chippy Clippy is an evil mastermind who, if given the power of ChatGPT, will just take over the world. They learn this from Ask Jeeves. But, um... <laughs> uh, but I was just I was just like, oh, Clippy. So, like, whenever she... Whenever Clippy's on camera, it's just literally a paper clip, like, taped to a... <laughs> taped to a popsicle stick. Nice. I mean, that's I basically like, what uh, Clippy was, so... <laughs> basically. 
Anyway, uh, welcome to the Clippy Podcast, where we get all Clippy all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so, all uh, right, let's get back to the intro. So, let's get back to the intro. If you guys want to support the show, instead of hearing about our, uh, we'll say, uh, troubled childhoods, <laughs> playing with Clippy, um, if you want to support the show, there's a couple ways you can do it. The first is with our TCG Player affiliate link, casualtryhard.com slash TCG. Surf on over to TCG Player using that link. Anything you purchase after getting there will help to support the show. It doesn't cost you guys anything extra, and we'd really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to support us a little bit more directly, you can do so at patreon.com slash casualtryhardmtg, where you will get access to our show notes. You get access to another hour of content out of us in the form of our completely unscripted, unedited pre-show. And you get put on my mailing list for when I have swag. If any of that sounds good to you guys, or if you just want to support the show, show us you love us, um, head on over to patreon.com slash casual triad MTG and chip a couple bucks in. Yeah. Thanks in advance. Yeah. So, all right. We have um, the shakeup of three formats. Three formats. Yeah, three formats. With uh, with our B and R announcement, yep. um, so standard got the hard no changes. Yeah, um, they said that they're happy with the state of the format, and this is going to get repeated a little bit later on. Um, but we got kind of a sneak peek about what their criteria for a hel healthy format is, and I don't know that I've ever seen it expressed like this before, so I figured I'd just highlight it real quick. Okay. Um, they said that. They view a format as healthy when there is a mix of, quote, macro strategies, meaning aggro control mid-range combo. And the data that they have about standards says that this is the case right now. Mm -hmm. So there is a healthy mix of macro strategies. Yeah. Um, now, like, you could argue that, like, you know, I think they kind of they lumped, like, the like the ramp deck mm -hmm. as like a control deck which uh, maybe maybe not yeah but yeah like i haven't played standard since the new set release i've been meaning to uh trumpet some carnosaurs and uh yeah uh, it either use them to kill things or to find uh invasions of Alora. yeah but uh, i've not had a chance to but the last time I played, it seemed fine. I think the biggest complaint I have with Standard is uh, by design, which is, you know, still having to play against Wandering Emperor and Winning Announcement and, like, all of those cards that were supposed to rotate. It just yeah. feels like we've been... Uh, Rafine. Yeah. It just feels like we've been seeing them for too long. Your rotating but, format isn't rotating. Yes. So I mean, you know, like Shieldred, yeah. right? Like, not not Shieldred would still be here. I mean, I, I guess that's something that we haven't super touched on when we were talking about like the standard rotations, is the fact that like standard has always had some amount of churn, and mm -hmm. while that has certainly put people off of the format at different points because their deck wasn't good week to week to week to week, and like the best deck changes, whatever. Um, I think that's kind of what defines standard as a format is the churn. Mm -hmm. And even before they stretched out this, uh, the rotation period, I think standard's been lacking some churn. So I don't, I, I don't know if this change is necessarily good from that point of view. Yeah. I think that like, uh, remember energy standard yeah. where like you played the energy shell and then just like, new things kind of got put into it. Yeah. But, like, you kept that same shell. Like, how long has Esper Midrange been, like, one of the best decks? Uh, For, like, a forever. year? Yeah. I mean, since right? Streets, it, right? Yeah. And so it just seems like we just throw, like, new things into mm -hmm. um, the... uh, Like, into the Esper shell. Yeah. We throw... You know, new things into the domain shell. Yeah. Right? As opposed to, like, you know, 
just kind of getting new decks. It just kind of feels like there are like these shells that are like, here's the shell, and we're just gonna like, you know, plop a new thing in when like, oh, they printed a better black two mana removal spell. Yeah. So I'll put that in over the the one I was playing before, or like it does slightly different things. I'm gonna do like three and one or whatever. Yeah. So it just feels like we're like tweaking around the edges, but like those you're playing against the same cards. Right. And like maybe if like, you know, we could return to that like you know, if we could turn to seven years ago where right, like every week there was an SCG and like things change, like maybe you know, Rafine wouldn't be like the card you played against every week because something else was better. Yeah. But now it just kind of feels like it's just like kind of shuffling chairs around, but you're not changing anything. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there has been some diversity and it doesn't feel like there's like one deck that is like super oppressive and standard, which is nice. Yeah. All right. So then we have the Pioneer slash Explorer. Yeah, they and listed these here? as different formats, um, but I think we can basically treat them as the same format. Like, the goal is mm -hmm. to make them analogous. So yes. So you might as well treat them as the same format. Um, we had two bans and an unban. So Karn mm -hmm. the Great Creator got the axe. Geological Appraiser got the axe. Later. And we got a looter scooter back. Yes, yeah, smuggler's chop, copter. Chop. Uh like tripled in price. Oh, did it? I didn't even look. Yeah. It went from like fifty cents to like two dollars or three dollars or something before. Uh but uh Back in my day, that was a fifteen dollar magic card. Yeah. I think I still have all mine. So I, I wasn't super too. worried about needing to get some. Yeah. Um so um it's one of those things that you had them. And then, like, they got banned and they were worth nothing. So, like, why would I get rid of them? Right. <laughs> it's a powerful uh, enough card to get banned. And I already own them. And I already paid yeah. way too much for them. So, why bother? I have already um, lost. Now they're worthless. Yes. So, um, Karn got banned mainly because of Mono Green. Mm -hmm. And I mean, on some level, Karn got banned because of Nykthos. Right? Like, yeah. Karn. Karn is good when you have the ability to make ungodly amounts of mana. Yeah. Because tacking four mana onto everything in your sideboard right. is not great. But if you could make, you know, eight mana on turn five, mm -hmm. that's not a big deal. Right. So Karn got banned because you had the ability to... Um, basically have the answer to anything your opponent played mm -hmm. out of your sideboard. Yeah. And that leads to an unfun fun play pattern. And it's like, oh, did you play creatures? I'll go get a boat. Right. Oh, did you play something else? I'll go get Cityscape Leveler. Yeah. Uh oh, you didn't play enough. I'll go get um well not on not a, not on arena, but I'll go get the chain veil. Right. And combo you off or get uh whatever that uh, the Pestilence Cauldron mm -hmm. and combo you off that way. Yeah. So the like always having the right answer, which kind of leads to repetitive play patterns and makes it hard for you to like, you know, uh, like makes it hard for like you to like do anything like, oh, hey, I'm playing a co I'm playing the geological appraiser deck. Well, if you don't have it this turn. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to get a stone brain and then I'm going to stone brain out your appraiser and then you can't win. Right. Right. And if I get to do that, then I'll get it back next turn and I'll stone brain out your carnosaur. <laughs> and now you definitively cannot do anything. Are you going to do hard cast four magma opuses? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, just let like, so the main thing was, like, leading to that, like, repetitive play pattern. Yeah. I mean, I think we've both played enough, like, you know, Explorer slash Pioneer that, like, the card you feared out of Mono Green was Karn. Yeah. Right, like, you know, three mana four fours with Trample are a pain. Right. But, like, 
And you're like, oh, I can, like, beat this. And then they just, like, Karn and then minus twice. And you're like, oh, I can never win now. So is it bad that when I get paired against Mono Green, the first thing I think to myself is, I hope they're bad at picking their tutor targets. <laughs> yeah, really, right? <laughs> like, I hope they don't know what they need in this situation. Right. Yeah. No, that's, that's very true. You're just like, I really hope they don't know what they're doing because I'm going to lose if they do. Right. Right. So I think mon like mono green becomes like a well, a good ramp deck that like actually has like some holes. Yeah, well that was kind of one of the things that is said in the article. And mm -hmm. this is what I got out of the article here about mono green and Maybe you got something different out of that. This is my interpretation, not the exact words. But they said that mono green has kind of become a pillar of the format. Kind of like when you talk about legacy, you talk about like the brainstorm decks, the force of will decks, whatever. Um, mono, like Nykthos has become what the format is built on. It was one of the first, you know, high level decks when Pioneer came around and it's kind of hung out in some form or another ever since then. And they didn't want to kill that because it's kind of become a pillar of the format. So getting rid of Karn does two things. It stops the, well, so Karn does two things in the deck. Number one, it gives you outs to any situation because you can just tutor up whatever colorless artifact. And number two is it also hates out just like random cards because of the, um, Null Rod ability. So getting rid mm -hmm. of Karn kind of does two things to that deck. Number one, it limits what the deck can do because now you don't have answers to everything anytime, anywhere. Also, you don't incidentally hate other decks out of the format. Yeah, like playing that like green-white artifact deck, um, there were definitely times where you were like, oh, um, like, I can beat their creatures mm -hmm. because I can activate, you know, whatever, the Ozolith or whatever. Yeah. Uh, like, the new, the, the Shattered Spire Ozolith, like yeah. the green one. Uh, but if they play a Karn, like, I can't activate it anymore. Right. And so, like, now I'm going to lose. Mm -hmm. It's also uh, really annoying when you, like, don't have quite enough mana and you need to crack your treasure. And then they Karn. Oh, and yeah. Like, and you're oh, like, why can't I? On. Like, why it's can't I do this? Ability. He's like, why can't I do this? And I was like, oh, yeah. Karn. I was like, thanks, buddy. Like, thank you so, so much. Yep. Um, like, I guess, like, in that slot, you know, you have, like, you can play, like, Oath of Nyssa, which I don't, like, I don't know if the, I don't think the ones on, in paper were playing Oath of Nyssa. I mean, at one point they certainly were. They, but they I don't definitely think they were are anymore. You could go back to that for some more consistency, because yeah. I know that the like um, arena, like the explorer ones, were playing the invasion of Ixalan, mm -hmm. which is just kind of just bad oath of Nyssa. Yeah. Um, I was looking for five drops that you could hit off of um, uh, Storm the Festival, because mm -hmm. like. That's kind of like your your like limit. Yeah. Right? Um, you have Nissa who shakes the world, mm -hmm. which some of those decks already play. Right. Uh you have like new Vorinclex. Mm-hmm. Right? Like that card's fine. You could go old school and play Verderous Gear Hulk. Yeah. Just like kind of lean into like we're just gonna be we're just gonna be big. 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 Yeah. You know what where is um, a plus one plus one counters pretty well? Any of your any of your four mana th five four fours four mana four four would trample yeah worst counters pretty yeah. well it does um, so the first thing that popped into my mind as a replacement was Vivian yes that was it, I was actually like I was like where is Vivian on this yeah, list um, because I like it's a incidental answer to artifacts and flyers mm -hmm. and can grab a card out of your sideboard. No, it's a creature, right? You can only get creatures. Oh, you're thinking Little Vivian or Big Vivian? Um, was it the Acoria Vivian is the one I'm thinking of, I think. Oh, okay. 
Um, Isn't oh, there one also, that's like minus two to grab something out of your sideboard? Maybe. I'm now. I'm now like furiously skipping, uh, <laughs> uh, going through. Here we go. A minus two. Oh no! So this one, the the I the monsters advocate is uh, when you cast your minus two when you cast your next creature spell, search your library for a creature card with lesser mana value and put it on the battlefield, then shuffle. Mm, that's not the one I was thinking of. I thought there was one that lets you tutor a card out of your sideboard, tutor a creature out of your sideboard. There's Vivian Reed, which I thought of, which is like look at the top four and you can put a creature or a land in your hand, and then minus three destroyed artifact creature. With flying or enchantment, yeah, and then it overruns. Um, let's see here, I'm going to be smart and uh, let's see here, we're gonna look for. Oh no, I hear the dustbuster going. Uh, let's see here, uh, da, da, da. is it outside? Yeah. It would be outside the game, yeah. M maybe I was uh, mixing them up, I might have been mixing them up. Yeah, because Arcbow Ranger, it's ultimate, so it's neg five is get something from your sideboard. That's the three mana one, though, right? That's the four mana one. Okay. Yeah, the three mana one is the one that makes your creatures have flash. Mm hmm. I like that one too, but I don't think that does the job. Um, no, probably not. Um. Yeah, but like I think Vivian, either of the five mana ones or the four mana one are probably pretty good. Yeah, so I think any like either one is good. Yeah, um, like the like you know search for a card with like less a mana that lesser mana value. Yeah, right. Like you could, it takes a lot of mana, but like you're used to having a lot of mana, mm -hmm. right? Then like putting. Having to put some of those silver bullets like actually in your deck, yeah, right. Where you're like, okay, like I guess I have to play, um, uh, like my reclamation sage in the main deck, yeah, so that I can go get it, or you know, some other like you know, bad, situationally bad creature. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you also just have like, you could just play like. Elder Golgoroth. Yeah. And just be like, okay, well, I'll be fine. Right. But, you know, Nyssa is fine. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I, I'm a sucker for a Nyssa, Nyssa Vital Force. Me too. Uh, right. So, like, there's any number of things you can you can get, uh, that, like, Silverback Elder. Mm hmm Right, it kind of like takes care of everything for you. Yep, and has like infinite toughness and three three mana pips. Yep. Well, so I mean, so does uh, four mana Vivian has three green. Mana oh, is pips. it one green green? Yeah. Oh, one is that green, the one green, that green. also like? Is that the fight one that gives counters? Um, that that guy was like the only person playing it, and he kept just kept winning events. You put two plus one plus one counters yeah. on up to two target creatures that gain trample until end of turn. Uh, number three is a fight, and number five is you uh, you tutor. Tutor from your sideboard. Yeah, like that card was like criminally underplayed. Mm -hmm. Like it, I played it that card. Wanna... The card was good. Yeah. So, like, there are enough things that can, like, replace Karn mm -hmm. that the deck's going to be fine. It's just finding what, like, those four slots are. And I don't think you, like, build the deck that differently. Well, I think I mean, you it's build just... build sideboard way differently. Yes, you have one. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You have one, but, like, and, again, but like... Realistically, there's enough, um, like, they staple enough abilities to creatures now that I would guess most of the things that you could take care of with Karn, you can take care of getting mm -hmm. something... I mean, it's a turn slower or whatever, but, and you lose your Vivian, but you could take care of the same problems with Vivian that you can with Karn. Yeah, I guess not absolutely. As good. Yeah, but I mean, if you play her and then activate your Nykthos, like it costs like kind of costs like one mana. One mana, yeah. To 
to to play it. Right. And I mean, you could also like, uh, um, the, we've we've got to have like an eternal witness. Yeah. Right. Or, uh, that you like down tick, get rid of it, like play some Bring like. It back. Yeah. What was that? Uh, yep. Marasa Ancient or something? Ancients of Marasa? Like it was like a BFZ thing that was like, or that was like massive. That was like a double, mo- a double back. Eternal Witness or something. Yeah. So the deck will be fine. Mm-hmm. It'll just be nice that like. They don't. I mean, if they were to play like five mana, like M nineteen Vivian, they would like still be able to draw two cards, right? With their, or actually more cards with their Planeswalker, mm-hmm. but it's not going to be the exact right card every time, right? Um. So aside from Mono Green, we also lost Geological Appraiser. It was too soon. We hardly knew you. Yeah, really. I I didn't even put that deck together. Yeah, I did. It was fun. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, their reasoning is that turn three combo decks don't belong in Pioneer. Fair. Uh, but they're I... fine with turn four combo decks. Yes. Um, I could see that changing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I lost the game playing like interaction dot deck to it was a geologic appraiser combo deck but both cyborg games they thought distortion to me oh okay and I, and I lost one game to another opponent who game one thought distortion to me <laughs> wonderful and I was like sick um so like you know, if they like get on the like, I'm just gonna play thought distortions and yeah, you know, whatever. Because like they can still play like, you know, five mana creature interaction mm-hmm. and stuff. So yeah, you know, it makes it it makes it harder with uh for your Carnosaur to hit your Quintorius, but right. it's fine. Um, yeah, like probably good riddance. Like yeah, honestly, I mean. I enjoyed playing the deck, but I, I like it. I knew going into it that it wasn't something I was going to be able to do for the long term. Yeah, no, it's definitely a deck that it's fragile. Yeah. And, but as I pointed out, like it pushes a certain chunk of the metagame out. Yeah. So again, we'll use me as an example because everything's about me. Um, <laughs> Playing stupid green white like plus one plus one counter artifact deck, mm-hmm. uh, had portable holes and had glass caskets. Uh, neither one of those can hit a uh, geologic appraiser. Correct. Uh, but they're both sorcery speed, so like right. literally had no removal to deal with that. Yep. Um, right. If you're like mono white humans, like your removal is brutal Cathar. Yeah. You're dead. Thanks for playing. You are dead now. Yep. Um, I did so, think it was interesting, like their rationale between like turn three and turn four. Like I think they think the difference is bigger than it actually is. Or yeah, like, like oh, maybe I'm more... wrong, but yeah, evidently there's a huge difference in interactability between turn three and turn four. Yeah, like I guess I don't know. Like you know, we could hyper geometric calculator this, right? Yeah. If you had like four instant speed removal spells that could kill a Quintorius. Yeah. Right? Well, like, it, what is. I don't. Like, it doesn't have to be just about that, though. I mean, if you're. Although, I guess if you're getting comboed out, it doesn't matter. But I think. Like, the game doesn't progress linearly, right? When you play a game of Magic. Every, every turn that goes by is more impactful than the turns that came before it. So I guess it would make sense that like a turn four has more value than a turn three. Yeah. Is that like so, weird logic or does that make sense or you can do something more powerful on four than you can do on three. Yeah. As like as the opponent trying as the opponent trying to like 
um, like protect yourself. Yeah. Well, I guess that's okay. So if you only had four instant speed removal spells, it could kill a a Quintorius, right? Or whatever the turn four combo thing is. Yeah. Quint. The difference in you, um, so you're fifty six percent to draw it by turn four. Mm-hmm. And fifty two percent to drop by turn three. That also doesn't account for like any other ways to get your thing though. Yeah, but like I was just like it's not a huge difference in terms of like I've gotta have my get lost. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and but also, like that doesn't like, account like if you've drawn an extra card or if you've scryed or mm-hmm. Yeah. Well more just along the lines of right, like on turn three, like you can play a fable, and yeah. then get like extra ways. That, like you can like start to like put your game plan into motion. Yeah, if you get to have your turn three, exactly. As opposed to never getting to it, like going like land, land, dead. Right. Like I understand it, but um, it it is inconsistent with what other things they've done because like you know. Oops, all MDFCs. Mm-hmm. Like one on turn four. Right. And that was too good. Yep. And inverter. Yeah. One on turn four. If you were like, I didn't know if it could win on turn four. No, I think it was turn five. Yeah. It like one on turn, like turn five. And so, like, yeah, on one hand, uh, like those redeemed, like, not fun play patterns. Yeah. And, you know, and I think that's like why they were banned was like, because like in having played a little bit of inverter mm-hmm. and having played, you know, a week's worth of like blue, red creativity, they're the same deck. Yeah. Right. It is a pile of, a pile of interaction. Mm-hmm. And then like, six to eight cards that win you the game. Right. And so, like, it is interesting that they're, like, turn four, but only, like, turn four with certain play patterns we're okay with. (laughs) Yeah. As opposed to, like, so it's like, turn four's fine. People like Planeswalkers, and people like clones. Yeah, or, you know, again, like, uh, you know, people... Do not, for whatever reason, like whatever Balustrade Spy and Undercity Informer are doing. Right. Like, just those cards are just like, no, the, that's that's awful. That's, like, not real magic. And I think there is, like, a line of, like, kind of like why they, like, are well, never going to... they're also not un- interactable. They aren't, but they are, though, right? Like, um, you can counter the inverter, right? Like, you can... Right, but you there's more play against Quint than there is against Fair, because you can kill the Quintorius. Yeah. I forget, how did Spy win in, in Explorer? Or uh, in, in Pioneer? Um, I think it was like some convoluted like Yeah, I, I don't thing. remember. But like, you also have like, I don't know, if you just like played Leyline of the Void. Mm-hmm. Right. So I don't know, but well, right, but like a leyline of the void is a lot more specific answer than than you have to play opposed to just instant speed removal. Yeah, just a piece of yeah. removal. Like you're gonna be yeah. playing some sort of removal anyway. Mm-hmm. You're probably not gonna just randomly be playing a leyline of the void unless you specifically want to hate out a combo deck. Yeah, it, it's just more like I think there. I think it is. We're okay with turn fours. With within certain parameters, yeah, right. There are other turn fours where you're less okay with, which is fine. <clears throat> like whatever you want to do is fine, but um, like I think that the it's one of those things that like the deck I don't think was all that good, mm-hmm. right? Like that was kind of the you know until I started getting thought distortioned, <laughs> then the deck felt really good, <laughs> but like. You just like hold up interaction. Yeah, I mean, we talked about that. But last but week. it did. But it did definitely like, like if that deck was the best deck in the format, uh, 
or one of the top decks, like, you just can't play mono white humans. Right. You can't play angels. Mm -hmm. You can't play, like, anything that does not, like, specifically have a bunch of instant speed removal. Like, it very much pushes the format, too. I don't know if you saw the last, uh, there was, like, a big tournament in an RCQ somewhere, and, like, the best performing deck was, like, blue-white control. Just piles of interaction. Yeah, you're just like, all right, like, and that deck has been historically pretty bad in Pioneer. Yeah. But, like, if everyone's derp to derp showing up with a 3 2 that you can, like, sorcery speed, like, you counter it and they, like, can't, like, do anything else, and you're just like, my deck is only instant speed stuff and Teferi. <laughs> I will gladly uh, just know that there are four cards in this matchup that matter, or yep. eight cards that matter, and never let any of them resolve. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And he's like, I need to cast literally nine spells this game. Right. I need to cast four counter spell or eight counter spells or removal spells and one to fairy, and yep. I will win the game. So like I think that like that I mean that's why I was playing blue red is like what is a pile of removal right. that I can also like um not uh not get clowned with. And it's mm -hmm. like there we go. Like this is not really what I want to be doing. Yeah. But it's what I have to do because, like, you know, I stand by my the format is unplayable right now because it's just <laughs> like, like, oh, it's turn three, I'm dead. And like, you do like if if arena wasn't the format that things were, that most games were getting played in, yeah. I think there would be a little bit more accepting of like this as like a fragile glass cannon thing. Well, yeah. But I think if, like, Arena being the place that, like, most games get played now, you don't want someone to, like, log on to Arena and, like, have their first three matches, them just get, like, clowned on turn, uh, on turn three, yeah. multiple games, and then just be like, well, this game isn't for me. Well, it, it's the power of perception, right? So mm -hmm. if you go to your FNM and you play four rounds of standard explorer pioneer or standard pioneer whatever at your fnm um like those people aren't going to be able to change decks as easily as somebody on arena number one so mm -hmm. when a new deck like this comes out maybe you don't have four people at your fnm that ran out and bought trumpet and carnosaurus to play this deck mm -hmm. So that's going to keep the numbers down a little bit, especially if it's a more casual FNM. Um, but you're also playing four rounds. If you sign on to Arena, it's pretty easy to rattle off ten rounds in an evening. Mm -hmm. um, if all you do is remember, if you show up to FNM and get paired against this deck once, you got clowned one round, right? Yeah. If you played for an evening on Arena, you could very easily play this deck four or five times. And then you just more. like. And you just, all you remember from your evening of playing Magic is getting absolutely raffle stomped half of your matches. Yeah, and just feeling like, again, like this isn't any fun. Yeah. Like, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like I understand it. Like, I think, again, like if we were. And they also had a, uh, like in the in the video, and then in, like I think to some degree in the announcement there was like discussion of fun, mm -hmm. and I think that as we've moved away from competitive uh, magic, I think that there has to be a, a greater focus on fun. Oh, for sure. And if like this isn't fun, then you know we're not going to do it. Right. Kind of thing. Yep. So like, I am fine with that. So we also had an unban. We should talk about real quick. Okay. Uh, smugglers copter was unbanned. Free the scooter. Free the scooter. Um, two things. The first is that I'm probably way more excited for this unban than I should be. <laughs> Because one of my one of my favorite standard decks was from uh, Shadows Kaladesh Standard, mm -hmm. and I have never been able to play that deck again. 
it was never a tier deck. It was a deck of my own creation and I loved it and nobody else had ever, ever heard of it. Um, but I loved it and I get to play it now. So I'm happy about that. It will not be good, but I will certainly put it together on arena. It was, I don't know if you remember it or not. Who was that? Uh, it's, uh, zombies. Bo-Mac. It was like red black zombies with yeah. Bomac and smugglers copter. Mm-hmm. Kind of a madness theme. Yeah. Um, but does this do anything to the format? Like what, what deck wants looter scooter? So I was trying to think, um, like it seems reasonable on like grease fang. Sure. Right. As a, like, it gives you a way to use like, you know, not that, um, Rafine's informant is like super dorky. Right. But it gives you like, a way to take, you know, maybe some, like, ant creatures mm-hmm. at, and, like, get through your deck. It's also a thing that, like, you can reanimate with Grease Fang. Mm-hmm. It's not going to win you the game, but, like, it might get draw it back, you to the put piece that wins the game, though. And it's infinitely more castable than yeah. Parhelion. Yeah. Um, I think that, like, a lot of the... So, what got it banned was the Mono Black deck. Right? Was the deck that got it banned years ago. So, like, I think that, like, a, like, mid rangey creature deck could use it as, like, a way to smooth out their draws. Like, the problem is, like, that deck is red-black. Yeah. And red-black has Fable and Treasures. Right. So it doesn't really need Looter Scooter anymore. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, that's kind like, of an interesting way to think about it. Like, Looter Scooter is kind of worse Fable. It's worse Fable. Like... Uh, it's maybe not worse, but it's kind of on the same level as like maybe it is just worse. Um, a blood tithe harvester, right? A blood yeah. tithe harvester is giving you a loot, a, yeah. a, a rummage, plus it's giving you a removal spell, or plus it's giving you it yeah. or damage. Um, but like I've played against basically the standard deck, uh, like green black mid range mm-hmm. with Glissa. And uh, the 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 three two trample guy that like has the adventure, whatever Mosswood, whatever yeah, Dread Knight or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like that deck doesn't have Fable. That deck doesn't have. That's true. Um, yeah, th- that deck might actually want. Like Smuggler's you could Copter. you could play something like that. Like if actually, you... that deck probably does want Smuggler's Copter. Yeah, because like, you can get like you can get through the garbage. Yeah. That. It like it lets you push damage, like you know, not that your Glissa ever gets blocked, but well, it also right. lets you put your uh, underdogs in the bin to bring back later. Yeah. Um. So there's like a lot, you know. There's there, like a non-red yeah. mid-range deck could go for Looter Scooter. Yeah. Also, like it's good turning kind of junky creatures into better creatures. Well, and effectively right, like, giving them haste, too. Like, you mentioned yeah. Rafine's Informant earlier, and that was kind of what I thought of when you said that, is that you play the Looter Scooter on turn two, and mm-hmm. then on turn three, like, if you don't have all your pieces, you get to... Um, double loot? Yeah, basically double loot, and like, now your Rafine's Informant has haste. Mm-hmm. Um... Like, Mono White, right? Like, I know, like, that deck's kind of a critical mass creature deck. Mm -hmm. But, right, like, sometimes your, like, recruitment officer doesn't do anything. Yeah. But, like, it's always going to do something with Looter Scooter. Right. Or, like, when you draw your fifth land, you can just hold it and then loot it away later. Yeah. Right? So... Like, that deck could, like, find use for it. So, like, it gives creature decks a little bit more staying power and selection. Mm -hmm. And, like, flood insurance. And then mid-range decks is going to give you the selection that you need. Like, oh, man, like, playing against control, this fatal push is bad. Yeah. Let me turn it into literally anything else. So, like, I think it'll... It'll probably see some play, but it's definitely like not the slam dunk it was before things went on fire. 
Yeah. But yeah, like, I don't think any red deck has a use to play it. Yep. So, but green, black, like, you know, gosh, is there like a green, like, I'll probably screw around with it if it comes to arena on, uh, like, in that, like, artifact deck, right? Oh, like, as like, it's not on arena? No, I guess it's because, not. Because it was banned. Yeah. And so they didn't put it in Kaladesh Remastered. Oh, so I'm instantly like, bummed now. <laughs> yeah. Here like, I am brainstorming so, all these brews and didn't even think to consider. Yeah. So we usually, like, they're going to do uh, cons. Yep. But then we usually, around this time, don't we usually get, like, another anthology? anthology yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they do an an another anthology. Yeah, like, it seems like that would be a perfect place to... Like, you could do an anthology around, um, like, things that go with Karlov's manor yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, um, uh, and include, like, Looter Scooter. So I mean, there's plenty of places for cards to get onto arena nowadays. So yeah, literally they can just be like boop boop. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, and like that doesn't seem like a hard one to program in. Yeah. All right, and then they uh they were like no uh no uh no break for you modern. We're gonna change things up. Mm -hmm. Like thankfully. So modern, there were two bands. Mm -hmm. uh, the first was Fury, and the second was My Beans yeah, up the Beanstalk. Beanstalk. So real quick, if you're aspiring Spike, like you've just you dislocated your shoulder, patting yourself <laughs> on the back. Congratulations, because, you got Beanstalk banned. Yeah, like deck did not exist. Right. Then, like. Two weeks before Thanksgiving, yeah, or something, made deck or like a month before Thanksgiving, like six weeks ago, made deck, mm -hmm. got card banned, yeah, within like a month, yeah, of making the deck. That's a pretty good. Uh, that's please come to my stream where we get cards banned. <laughs> that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good uh, tagline for your stream. Um, I mean, I don't think he needs congratulations. I think everybody's uh, well aware of his his prowess. Oh, true, but like, I don't think he's got a card ban before. That's like a, a special level <laughs> of a prowess. Like, did you think I lost a step? No, no. Yeah. All right. So we banned Fury, and they think that it will um, uh, unban little creatures, yeah, which is true. Or let you yeah. play small creature decks. Um, and be uh, at the time of this banning, I think that like Recto Scan was close to a quarter of the modern meta game. Yeah, that's pretty big. Yeah, in in uh, in interest of competitive diversity. Um, <laughs> so it will like free up, um, creature um like small creatures. They were saying that it will probably decrease the amount of grief and bowmasters played. Yeah. Because you played those with Fury. Right. And like the natural replacement is Solitude, but Solitude is going to always be a two for one against you. Right. Where sometimes the Fury was like a two for one for you, where you were like, I got rid of two cards and killed four of your things. Yeah. Um, What's, so, what's kind of weird, though, is like in the same sentence, they said that um, Fury punishes small creature decks, which obviously mm -hmm. it does, and they're hoping that those come back now that Fury's gone. But they didn't do anything against Bowmaster, which does the same thing. And, and like, Red and Six is still legal. Yeah. Yeah, right, like, like Ren, I don't think Red and Six is as punishing as either fury or bowmaster but yes no but just in the in terms of like would you still feel good if you were cameron would you still feel good going turn one glistener elf no no you'd be like i mean oh my honestly God. i don't even know 
like how much play Red and Six sees anymore. No, it doesn't see nearly as much. Yeah. But I mean, I think that's just because it was red green and not red black. Yeah. Um, right. Like, because Red and Six is good when you, when people are trying to small ball you with Thalia's and Noble Hierarchs. Right. And Fury was like, no. <laughs> I'm just a removal spell, no. too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Um, and like Fury had like the thing that separates Fury from Solitude is a turn one four four double striker mm-hmm. does the Lord's work and gets your opponent dead now. Yes, it and hits hard, right? Like it's a three turn clock yeah. that you can't fatal push and you can't bolt. Right. Where uh, Solitude being a uh, you know kind of best case with these undying effects being a. Uh, Oh, what's it called? A 4-3? Yeah. You can't push it, but you can bolt it. Right. Uh, so that's kind of a huge deal. Um, I will say that, like, if you went, like, you know, if you went white-black, right, having ephemerate to also, like, get your oh, bowmasters. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's getting dangerously close to the deck that you and I brewed during Modern Horizons <laughs> 2 previews. Like, yeah, dangerously like, close. <laughs> Yeah, like you're like grief solitude and then a card that didn't exist in Orcish Bowmasters. Yeah. Right? Like they're going to have the small creature problem. Yeah. I think as long as Bowmasters is around. Mm-hmm. Right? You can't just keep making like flash deal one damage things. Right. And then be like, oh my god, I can't believe no one plays one toughness creature. It's like you printed the card. I mean, especially specifically against Thalia, since Bowmaster is like the perfect answer to a Thalia. It doesn't get exactly. taxed by Thalia, and it kills it, and hangs around for incidental damage. Yeah, and makes another body. Yeah. Yeah. It. So, I don't think they've dealt with their one toughness creature problem. This yeah. is a step in the right direction. It's gonna, like, move the metagame off of um off of red black which is probably a good thing yeah and so it's just like where is it going to settle but i think that like if you were like i think the biggest thing that like white black loses is uh you know is fury uh, sorry as is uh ragavan yeah. right like you don't have that other turn one like oh crap if i don't yeah. kill this thing i'm gonna die yeah, like, except Ragavan is also a small creature. It is. I mean, but yes, I mean, it's like you're not going to deal with it on turn one. Like this, like if you get hit with it once, it's too late. And mm-hmm. the uh, Bowmaster is not going to stop a turn one getting cracked with a Ragavan. But I mean, but like, do you just play like Esper Sentinel? Oh like, yeah. Are you like sure. are you like Esper Sentinel, and you're like the way I'm like making your life difficult is. I'm going to draw this, this one mana spell is going to draw me two cards over the course of the game. Yeah. And you like kind of have to deal with it Mm -hmm. and it trades with a Ragavan. Does. Right. So, and like getting hit with the Ragavan, like if you had to go like bolt your Esper Sentinel, so your Ragavan could get dashed in, they drew their card. Right. Off the Esper Sentinel. So like, you're not super far ahead on that exchange. So, I don't know, you can probably put something together, but I yeah. think that's where people are going to go. But you're definitely going to lose the, like... That's like, actually great in the mirror, too, because you draw a card off of all the... Uh... The undying effects. Yeah. And the ephemerates and stuff. Yeah. But, like, oh, what is it called? Uh, so, I forgot the guy, guy's name who won the last Pro Tour, right? Like, against Tron. Mm-hmm. Like, I just was, like, shruggy, like, fury, undying it. Like, okay, like, are you going to be able to carn me before I kill you with this? Yeah. Right? And, like, you don't have that in white-black. Right. Right? Like, you just don't. It's, like, maybe grindier, maybe a thought season, maybe it's mid range or whatever, but, like, it's not... You don't have the, like, out to just, like, unbeatable threat for Tron. Yeah. So, that is probably for the best. But I think that this was good. Also, like, 
um, kind of transitioning to Beans a little bit, like the other place that Fury got played a ton yeah, was, was in like Beans. Beans and then before that, like Four Color Elementals. Yeah. Right, because like the way that we, people were trying to offset the like the the giving away of cards was like you played Risen Reef. Yeah, you were like Risen Reef Fury, all your stuff. Draw a card off my Risen Reef. Yeah, right. Uh, and then it became, well, Risen Reef gets Bowmastered and gets Furied. You know, it doesn't get Bowmastered and Furied. Beans. Mm-hmm. So. Like perhaps knocking down those like you know what was it, money pile type decks mm-hmm. is probably good. Like I still have my four furies, even though it was clear they're getting banned. Yeah, I think I have two. Uh, just because, like, I don't know. Uh, I like my my chalice legacy deck. Place them in the sideboard. There you go. So they're so, gonna be way cheaper now. You got anything else to add to beans or? No, I mean, they went to the say that like it's just super hard to interact with. Well, right, like they you, said you that get... it's hard to interact with profitably or at parity with because mm-hmm. when when your opponent beans, they immediately did something to draw a card off of it. Well, I mean, it resolving drew them a, drew them a card. Well, right, but like then they evoke an elemental and like they're up mm-hmm. on the exchange regardless of what you do. Yes. So. That's it. Yeah, like, yeah, you just, you can't interact with it, and then it took all the, what it did is it took all the cards that were already, like, super prevalent in um uh Modern, mm-hmm. the Evoke Fury, Solitude, Leyline Binding, yeah, and just made them all better. Right. So, like, fine that it's gone. Kind of sad. Like, I had all the cards for that, but just never had a reason to put it together. So I never got to like enjoy cascade it. into beans. Yeah. But that's fine. Yep. Yeah. Not not really my playstyle anyway, but it I mean I could fun. see you playing that deck. Like drawing I wouldn't call drawing, that not like, your playstyle. Like I think that's in your wheelhouse. Yeah. But you drawing have a pretty like big five cards. Drawing five cards a turn feels pretty pretty nice. Yeah. <laughs> I can never lose. I mean, beans um, and evoke elementals is pretty close to uh, elementals, which you really yes. enjoy. So, yes, yes. Speaking of, that was another card deck shadow banned by Geological Fraser. <laughs> yes. Um. So, uh, moving legacy, on to legacy. Yes. No changes. No changes. Again, Uh, the healthy mix of macro strategies. Yep, repeated basically the same line, which I thought was weird because I had never heard that string of words before come from wizards, Mm -hmm. and twice in the same article. Um, I think it was also, I think it was this article where they were like, people want to play Brainstorm, Force of Will? Yeah. Like, we're not banning them, stop it. Well, that was... Um, I don't know if it was this article. That was the stream that they did last week. I think said that. Okay, I, I thought it, it, no. Here's players want to play brainstorm force of will and wasteland, mm-hmm. and thus they remain even though they would have been removed from other formats long ago due to their ubiquity. Oh, okay, there you go. Uh, so and legacy is also powerful enough to absorb cards that would otherwise need to be banned in other formats. Hence, we seldom take action. And I think it's another um. Uh, so I'm just basically reading this paragraph in an odd order, but the first line I think is going back to your legacy is vintage theory. Mm-hmm. All right. When making changes to legacy, we often look at data through the lens of community sentiment. Yes. Right. This is not a competitive format. Yep. Like, are you nerds having fun? Right. If we done goofed and you're not having fun, we'll do something about it. We'll fix it. Yep. But if you guys are basically content content and leaving us alone on Twitter, yep. we will not mess with your format. Basically. That is so, how I read that. Yeah, like we are not going to mess with this unless it is really terrible. Yep. And it's not really terrible, so we're not going to mess with it. Yep. It's like, okay. Uh, we did have one more ban. Now, I don't have a lot to say about this. Um, 
in Pauper. Monasteries mm-hmm. with Spear was banned. I don't play a lot of Pauper. I don't follow the format super closely. And there is literally zero explanation in the article. It refers you to uh, a video that I did not watch. Oh, I read the article. that uh, I read the article for the explanation of Pauper bands. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, did my homework. So, um, I watch... I was watching a reasonable amount of popper content. Mm-hmm. So Bryant Cook would play, you know, he just plays combo decks, but like would play popper from time to time when he wanted to play like a combo deck. Um, Thraven Yu would play popper from time to time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know Th- uh, Thraven Yu like just hard stopped. Yeah. He's like, this format's not reasonable. And Bryant Cook hasn't posted a popper video in a month and a half. Okay. Two months. And basically, Red Deck Wins was the best deck by like a mile. And so the reason they banned it, according to the article, was basically the format has sped up and Monastery Swift Spear. It's a major part of making red decks good and faster. Yeah. And then combining that with all the card advantage that they keep putting in red. Right. That it didn't used to have access to. Yeah. Uh, Ren's Resolve. Yeah. Um, whatever. Uh, whatever reckless, the new one is. Yeah. Reckless whatever. Um, synthesizer. Yeah. Right. We've stuck all of this card draw in red. And so, like, this has sped the format up to a point where, like, it's now like warping the format to beat red. Okay. Right. Like you're burning eight cyborg slots to like beat the red deck. Right. So it's like pushing a lot of stuff out. So on one hand, they were like, yo, red deck too fast. You can die like on your turn three. Mm-hmm. Right. Like they go to their turn four, you're done. And like a reasonable red draw does that. But then you had the thing where they're like, but also you can like, a good thought scour means that you could be like dealing with two Tolarian terrors on turn three. But we're okay with that. And it was like, I think, I forget who it was in yeah, our Yeah, but like, Discord. that's got to be a really good thought scour, though. Yeah, well... Like, the, that, that, that draws a lot less average, for lack of a better fair. term, than like a Swift Spear card draw spell draw is. Yeah, well... The the thing that was interesting was they were talking about how Swift Spear has pushed the format faster. But at the same time, you have all this other stuff that's also pushing the format faster. Yeah. Right. Talarian Terror. And now you have Cryptic Serpent. Yeah. Right. Basically, Clarion Terror with like two, uh, a second blue pip. And, uh, so, like, things like that are also pushing the format faster. So they were looking at, like, do we need to ban Terror? Do we need to ban, like, Lorien Revealed? Yeah. Um, and things like that. And they also kind of thought that, like, Goblin Tomb Raider might be, like, too good for, like, the... Oh, God, what is it called? Oh, like, the it. Affinity Decks? Yeah. Right, Goblin Tomb Raider, because, yeah. like, then you have just Tomb Goblin Raider. Raider. Yeah. yeah, now you have Tomb Raider and, like... Actually, if you play it off like a artifact ancient, land, it's yeah, just an ancient strictly den. better guard, goblin guide. Yeah. Um, so they thought like, well, maybe go- a goblin tomb raider because the red decks play ancient den and oh god, um, experimental synthesizer. Yeah. Like that could like, and then you play like Valderian Epicure, you have like twelve artifacts in your deck to turn it on. So like, yeah, you know, you've got like kind of a replacement for Swiss Spear that takes a little bit more work. Um, but then you have like all that glitters and stuff like that that are yeah. speeding up the affinity decks as well. Well, so, so like, like I have a, I mean, finish your thought, but I have something to say about this okay. too. The whole format is getting pushed faster and it's pushing a lot of things out. Yeah. But they were like, well, the win rates aren't like that, you know, out of line, terrible. Yeah. They're not that like out of line. And they're like, here are the decks that are good. Like Mono White has a really good win rate and Black Green Gardens and stuff like that. So here we go. So 
uh, da, da, da. familiars is at the top of the of the win rate with fifty six percent, which is just like mono blue ninjas, kind of. Yeah. Or like blue, uh, and then you have like cogates, mm-hmm. which is like you know the gates decks with uh, cobblade and not cobblade, uh, uh, squadron hawk and um, uh, got the the one mana one one and bomb guy, oh, sacred yeah, yeah, yeah. cat. Uh, and then, like the the gate that gives your creatures plus X plus X equal to the number of gates you control. Black green gardens, blue black fairies without terrors. Uh, we're all so familiar with fifty six, and those other decks were fifty five to fifty two. So, and then like white weaning has like a fifty four percent win rate as well. So it's just that like so they said the problem of speed and uh, polarity have pushed us to act here. We may do so again. However, we talk about Popper a lot, and part of the reason we haven't made a change prior to this is uh, is that things have looked balanced. We settled on monetary Swiss beer ban recently, but we wanted to wait to deploy it until after Brazilian Popper Nationals, uh, which just happened this weekend, so that players weren't scrambling to change anything last minute. Yeah. So, and they're also talking about maybe like reversing some bans, like Prophetic Prism. And they did think about sinkhole him to the rocker at high tide. Let it Ooh. fly, baby. Let it fly. <laughs> They're like, but we decided not to unban them. It's like <laughs> black, black, blow up your land. Yeah. Get some. It's fine. Um it's I, fine. I, I did have a thought about your um I don't want to call it a rant, but your what you were just speaking about. Okay. About like the format speeding up. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's a problem with a deck or two decks. And I, I don't even necessarily know that it's a problem. It's just kind of a thing that Magic is doing now across the board. Like, power creep is real. Magic spent years and years and years trying not to power creep. Like, if you look at the way cards have changed throughout the 30 years of Magic compared to how Yu Gi Oh! changed in the period of two years. Like, they have done a really good job historically, not lately, but historically about managing power creep. Lately, the floodgates are open, you know, do whatever you want as far as power creep goes. The game's getting more complex. Creatures are getting better. Spells are getting better. Lands are getting better. Um, Part of all of these things getting better is them being more efficient, which means they're faster, which leads to formats speeding up. Um, I don't know that under the current design philosophy, you're going to get away from formats getting faster. No, I I agree. Like it is definitely not a popper issue; it's a design issue. As you were saying that, I was thinking about like last week. We kind of touched on some of the stuff a little bit. I think it was last week or two weeks ago. A little bit of like the limited stuff mm-hmm. and how like you know one of the better decks in um uh gosh. Lost Caverns of Ixalan is like play like a yeah. one mana one one flyer that like makes a a, a map, map and then explore onto it. Now you have a two two flyer, yeah, and then like you know a pump spell or like a cheap equipment, and now you're just beating down with like uh, you're just beating down quick, mm-hmm. and like there's been a lot of the recent limited formats Mm -hmm. have slid into like you know the Carson special of one two three you're dead yeah and I think there are you're getting way more of those formats because they have like made a conscious effort it Mm -hmm. seems to make one drop creatures better yeah and they make those one drop creatures better typically at the common slot because like I mean think about Goblin Tomb Raider Mm -hmm. Right, it's red for a one two, and if you control an artifact, it begets plus one plus Mm zero. And Kaladesh, that card was an uncommon. Right, the exact same card. Yep, was an uncommon. Now it's a common. Right, and like if the that happens enough, right, if you're right, monastery Swiss sphere is fine at uncommon, but a problem at common. Right. 
whatever the heck that was, uh, whatever that one, that card from Kaladesh was, might be fine as an uncommon, but a problem as a, as a common. Yeah. Right, where you always have four of them in your deck. Right. Only time will tell. But you definitely have this situation where as they've, you know, made the one and two drops better, from mythic all the way down to uh, common, like, all your, like, the, we talked about this a long time ago, like, what was it, what was it called? Like, the, like, it was not the key turn, but basically, the yeah, turn yeah. you have to have interaction on. Yeah, I think we did call it the key turn. Yeah, is, like, getting more and more close to being turn one. Yeah. Right, like, you know. Well, I mean, we talked not, about that during Oko Standard. Mm-hmm. That where you had to had to be able to kill the was turn one. You have to be able to kill Gilda Goose, so you have time to draw your answer for the turn three Natty Oko. Right, right, and so we're just like because cards are getting better, you're pushing the the turn you have to have removal down further and further. Yeah, and like then you start to run into these situations where like. Now the removal's way better, mm -hmm. right? Like, uh, I know, was it cut down? Is it uncommon? Yep. Right, but, like, if the next Commander Master set or Commander Draft set, if they put Fatal Push at common, I would not be surprised. Right, it is. I'd be like, oh, okay. Like, they already put Cast down at common. Yep. Like, this is kind of the next logical, like, Black needs a one-mana common removal spell. Right, and so like, as the threats are getting cheaper, now the answers have to get cheaper, and that's now condensing everything into like, almost like, a vintage or legacy timescale mm -hmm. of like you're like, double spelling on turn two, mm -hmm. or you need right? to have your force up on turn one. Yeah, right, and like we're just getting to that point where like all the cards, you know, the one drops are also good. That you have to be able to interact. Yep. So, all right, you hit me with something. We're we're an hour twelve in. Yeah, I want to cover so, this next thing, and then we'll cut it off. You there. you hit me with this, and I had no idea what you're talking about. So, let's go. We're getting a new format. What? What? <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Like I randomly saw. I think it was a. This was over the weekend. Okay. I, I randomly saw uh, a tweet from Seth. Uh, yes, I, I think I saw this too. That was like I, I want, I like the idea of a format without like f fake cards and rebalance cards. Yeah, and I was like, wow, that's weird. I didn't hear anything about this, so I went and looked it up, and we're getting a new format. <laughs> um, it's called Timeless. It's an okay. arena format, um, non-rotating, so it's kind of in the same vein as Historic. It will have access to all of the cards on Arena. Even the ones that were banned on release, like Channel, Demonic Tutor, whatever. Um, oh, I gotta play this format until they ban Channel. Hang on, let me get there. The cards that are real magic cards will not be rebalanced, so they will be as mm. they are printed. Unfortunately, it will have the fake cards also. Oh! Um, and they will be subject to rebalancing. Okay. And it will have a restricted list. Okay. So out the rip, based on information gathered from the no ban list historic events, uh, Channel, Demonic Tutor, and Tybalt's Trickery are restricted. So you can only play one in your deck. Okay. Um, what I noticed missing from this list is Natural Order. Which, when they banned Channel... And Demonic Tutor? Yeah. Fools be natural order in. Like, that uh, was, like, the 100%, next thing. 100%, yeah. Like, there is no reason to not play 16 one-mana dorks and a crater hoof. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they also said during this announcement that 
the cons fetches will be legal when cons remastered releases next week we brainstorming baby yeah so that confirms fetches and cons which is cool mm -hmm. and it gives us access to fetch lands which is awesome for a number of reasons now we only have half of them not saying they won't give us the other half but yeah this i think sounds like a cool format um in that seth tweet that i saw the one of the things that kind of interests me about that tweet was that he said he doesn't he's not a proponent of the fake cards either yeah and one of the things that he said is he doesn't think the power level of the fake cards is enough to compete with like what's actually been printed and i think i agree i don't know how many of the fake cards you're going to see actually getting played um so it depends right like the was it crucius is like really good the, I, I don't know any of the fake cards uh it's like one black red for like a three three. Oh and yeah, like yeah, yeah. If you yeah. discard a card, Make you can like say, yeah, you can say like Bob or your uncle, and then <laughs> yeah. like you get a card or something. Yeah. Uh, and then there's like the card that like lets you rebuy spells from your graveyard. It's like one red green. Like those are pretty good. I mean, they are just like creatures. Yeah. But they could be rebalanced into like not an issue. Like the issue is like. What if they're like, oh, they're not playing the rebalance. They're not playing the uh, arena cards. Let's uh, take a mana off of this Crucius, and now it's just red black. Yeah, or something dumb like that. Like, well, I don't think this... they can rebalance per format though. Like, if they did that, the rebalance would apply to all formats, and I don't know if they want to nuke any of the other formats just to make timeless. Don't they? Like, weren't they changing cards that were in? like historic while they were still in standard or was that and they might not have been for alchemy for alchemy uh mm, yeah but like this means like winota's like legal now yep oh oh like can they give me soul land so i can chalice people and then <laughs> winota them like let it let the hate oh my god blood moon you can blood moon people yep oh, welcome welcome to magic Welcome yep. to 1997. Yep. <laughs> Blood Moon, you. Um, well, I mean, you also run into one of the issues with early modern that most of our listeners, I don't even know that they know it ever existed, but there was a point in time where modern only had access to the cons or to the Zendikar fetches. Yeah. They didn't have all 10 because the originals were back in Onslaught. Yeah, because the cons fetch lands are the reprint of the Onslaught ones. Right. I mean, I mean, they, they, they've lived this before, right? Like, because we had the, the, the Kaladesh fast lands, but yeah. we didn't have the, the Scars ones. The Scars ones. So they've seen a little bit of it. I mean, fetches with triumphs like yeah ley line binding is like a hell of a drug yep oh my gosh you can beans people you can free the beans no evoke elementals though At no evoke. Not, yet. not yet wait till modern horizons 3 comes out um, it's gonna be on arena the the upside in like I know, like, this kind of goes to, like, remember how they're like, oh, you can't have too many formats, so it'll split the queues, and the queue times will be too long. Yeah. Shut up. Right. Shut up. You, you're you lying. Right. Like, this is, like, useful to you. No, I didn't read the article, because it was, what was their rationale for doing this? Like, oh, it's dumb that, that we keep putting... Okay, like, you're like, it's dumb that we keep putting cards on the client that no one gets to use outside of Limited. Yeah. Uh, so we need to stop doing this. The, like, the thing that's, like, exciting is this is a baby, itty weeny teeny tiny baby step towards legacy. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I mean, realistically, it is just, you know, they're probably, now, it took them 
four freaking years or three freaking years to like even like decide to try to to say that get yeah, we have a plan to make Pioneer Explorer. Yeah. But like what are they, two hundred and fifty cards from mm-hmm. having like most of yeah. like legacy that matters. Right. Right? Like that's not a like un unreachable goal. Right. Now you know, they probably do modern first, but again, mm-hmm. are they like, well, I, honestly, that might be closer to legacy than they are to modern. Maybe. Yeah. Cause they've like, you've got brainstorm, you've got like blood moons, I guess played in both. You have chalice, which is played in legacy. Like you need like a couple fast land or soul lands. Yeah. Uh, but no, just like the, like, it seems like they're slowly like they're like we're putting all these cards on here and then like cutting people off from them. Mm-hmm. So we should probably make it so people can use these cards because like, yeah. hey, you like you opened a brainstorm, can't play it. You opened a whatever, can't play it. Yeah. Like that's Blood just moon. Blood Moon. Yeah, like it's not a good feeling. Yeah, you open a natural order, can't yeah. play it. It's like, and I mean, having a like restricted list like gives it a different vibe than, um, gosh, than like legacy. Yeah. But like, I don't know, like, Saltai nonsense with like brainstorms, channels, and uh, Ulamogs. Right. Like, okay. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm interested in partaking in this uh, bit of nonsense. Turn one. Mystical Tutor, get my channel. <laughs> oh my god, you're right. Mystical Tutor is on here, isn't it? Is it? Uh, it's, I think some of them are. I don't know if Mystical Tutor... Mystical Tutor might be. Might be. Because it got, like... I guess it got reprinted in, like, another product. Yeah, I don't know what like the, the like the was, though. The, the ugly one with, like, the, the, like, glowing vial. Yeah. Uh, that is not just a person that's, like, doing research. The cool person who's a researcher. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, Dominaria Remastered, which isn't on Arena, I don't no, think. Yeah, not on Arena. There was a secret layer drop that was for. There was list. So not on Arena. Uh, it is not on Arena. Like, why are, like, all of the versions worse than the original? Because <laughs> they don't make art in that style anymore. Like, and the original is only seven bucks. Like, yeah. why would I, like, spend $14 on the secret layer? Well, because it didn't used to be $7. I know. I know. It, yeah. it definitely wasn't. Before all of the reprints, it was certainly not $7. Yeah. Um, can I say we called it, though? What? This format. Oh, yeah. I mean, like... We talked about this when they started running, like, back-to-back-to-back, no ban list. Oh, yeah, like, this is... Like, they're gearing up for a format. Yeah, this is a test. Yeah. I mean... Do they... They don't still do Alchemy, do they? Yeah. Like, they they actually... Funny you say that, new Alchemy set came out today. I signed a new arena and got three free Alchemy packs. Oh. (laughs) <laughs> okay, I I apparently did not sign into arena late enough in the day to get my free alchemy packs. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Alchemy is so annoying. Yeah, I agree. Right. We I wish could, it didn't exist. We could have had um uh, ex- a pioneer on the client already, mm-hmm. and could be like well on our way to modern. Right. With the like forty cards they make or thirty cards they make every, every set. set, yeah, right. Like if for the last three years they were just pumping in like modern and um uh pioneer cards, like mm-hmm. we would be done. Well, so here's what I'm gonna say about that. I just got done patting ourselves on the backs for calling this format. Okay, I'm gonna make another prediction. Okay, um. Wizards does not run Magic Online anymore. They do not. Daybreak does. Daybreak does. So 
I think that would mean Wizards has all the incentive in the world to use all of their resources on Arena to make it their premier place to play digital magic. And I have a feeling that includes Modern, possibly Legacy, definitely Commander. Okay, so I understand Commander is, is, a, is a hard nut to crack. Mm-hmm. I, I, um, it's happening, though. I'm calling it. Oh, this is my prediction. It, oh, it has to. Yeah. Right. It literally has to. Yeah. Let me, for the people, what is the state of Magic Online? I think we talked about this in the pre-show last week. Okay. The Lords of Limited versus Limited Resources set matchup. Right. Right. They were going to do it last week or two weeks ago. But because Arena is an A-plus client run by unpaid interns, yep. direct challenge did not work. Right. So as opposed to do the event that they've been doing for the last, like, two years on Magic Online, they canceled it. <laughs> Could not be bothered. Could not be bothered to log into Magic Online yeah. and do the thing. So, like, I don't know what the contract for uh, Daybreak Games for Magic Online looks like. But, but, if they wanted to, they could just put the Vintage Cube. Mm-hmm. on arena oh for sure right make a few little changes if they're like oh man fading is just we can't figure it out <laughs> yeah right but like many of the new cards are just like the old cards where they like took the downside off or knock like one mana off right right and like oh man like dream halls is hot garbage and it's like you know what we we had the vintage cube for years without dream halls. We can deal with not having dream halls again. Yeah. Fine. Right. But like, I mean, all of the power is on arena. Yes. Cause I remember that event. Well, it's Where also we... one of the oh. uh, alchemy cards. Oh yeah. Puts the, the power stupid... into your deck. Yeah. The stupid the like bird, bird guy. Yeah. yeah. Then people blink. Yeah. Um, I ancestral into an ancestral and I ancestral. <laughs> um but like yeah, like the biggest event on Magic Online is like the vintage cube. Yeah. And like if you could just move the vintage cube to arena, if they could do two things. Move the vintage cube, mm-hmm. right? Again, have your best of one and best of three queues. Yep. But then in the best of three queues have a leaderboard. Oh, yeah. Right? And just track who is the best vintage cube player. Yep. Right? Like, who has the most 3 O's? I mean, and that like, already exists, right? That's just your rank. Like, you, you could just have a separate fair. rank for vintage cube. Like, vintage cube. Fair. Like, I'm... Yeah. I guess that works. Yeah. Like, just a separate ladder. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But, like, you could do that in, like, because like I feel like Daybreak is running the Vintage Cube more than it used to be run. Oh yeah, for sure. But it, it feels like they're running a, quite a few times this year already. Yeah, because it used to be run like once in the summer. Yeah. And then like once and like because it Over was the like holidays. the Holiday Cube. Yeah. So it may, it got run like two maybe three times a year. Yeah. And I feel like Daybreak's running it like once every six weeks, once every two months. Yeah. Like it feels like it's like double what it used to be Mm -hmm. so like yeah like you could could just bury magic online in Mm -hmm. the dirt i mean and like oh my value i don't i don't think they have any incentive just to bury magic online because like they still magic or wizard still owns magic online they're just like they break run it i don't think they have any incentive just to burn it to the ground but well not not burn it to the ground but like if you put like if three times a year vintage cube was on arena absolutely and like you Instead know of running all it six the, times a year on magic online run it twice and then run it 
during the off times, like on Arena. Yeah, or you know, if right, I don't know how much coordination they do, but like if you ran, how many more dollars would be spent on Vintage Cube on Arena versus Vintage Cube on Magic Online? Yeah, and if they're running Vintage Cube all the time on Magic Online, they must be making money with it. Right. Right. And so, if I'm Wizards, what I meant by, like, put Magic Online in the dirt is if you run Vintage Cube three times a year on Magic Online, on, on, on Arena, yeah. how much money is left for people to True. buy tickets for it on Magic Online? Or, like, you get some people that are like, I just play Vintage Cube, mm-hmm. and then they, like, play it on Arena, and they're like, oh, this is way better. I'd much rather do this. Yep. And then you get them hooked. Right. But yeah, like it, I think I mentioned this a while back, right? It makes no sense to have two sets of servers. Even if you're letting someone else run the second set of servers, Mm -hmm. right? It makes no sense to have two sets of servers and be running two games that effectively do the same thing. Right. Right. Like every video game publisher, right? Um, When the new game comes out, they hold on to the old game for a while, and then there comes a point where they're like, we're taking the servers down. Yep. Right? It might be a decade, but the the servers go down. Yeah. Right? Like, I watch Mario Maker content because I'm the biggest nerd, (laughs) and uh, um, Mario Maker 2 has been out for a couple years. And next year, Nintendo is no longer going to be supporting Mario Maker 1. Yeah. And it's just going to go away. Okay. Right? Like, there's going to come a point where, like, Wizards is going to be like, you know, it's not worth it. Like, instead of getting, like, instead of Daybreak taking 20% of everything we make, or, you know, whatever the whatever split is, is. Yeah. we can just make all of it. Right. And cut our overhead. Well, and I mean, you could be sneaky about it too, and say that it's Daybreak's fault. They ran it into the ground. They made it not profitable anymore. So we're sorry yeah. about all your collections. This is just what we have to do to save the game. Save well, the game. Yeah. Well, um, so um, on this thing, like, I just saw this story yesterday. I think. Um, so. Uh, People apparently like bought content on the play- from the PlayStation Store. They bought like Discovery shows, like MythBusters and stuff, like on oh, Discovery yeah. Plus or whatever. I saw that, yeah. And like PlayStation's like, we're not renewing our contract with Discovery, so like all your stuff goes up in smoke. Yeah. Right. I mean, owning a Mox Jet on Magic Online is. You just have a license to use that piece, that that digital thing on Magic but if Online. The, on Magic Online, but if that digital, if that client goes away, yeah, like you're gone, right? And I know, like, you know, there was last time we like talked about this. I think Brad was like, "There's like people that like play Popper, and like that's how they make their living is they just grind Magic Online." Yeah, and it's like, yeah, but like. Wizards doesn't care. Right. Right? Like, Wizards doesn't care that someone's, like, if they win, like, three popper leagues, they can sell their tickets and, like, make rent. Right? They're like, no, we don't care. Yeah. We care that we, like, get all the money. And the fact that you're, ex- that you, player, are extracting money out of our thing is less money for us. Right. Bro, if you get beans, I get less beans. <laughs> It's a it's a zero bean game. It's a zero b yeah, it's a zero bean game. Yeah. So like this is kind of the first step to like it's like okay, how popular like I'd be way more in if they didn't have the fake cards. But maybe Seth's right and the fake cards can't compete. I I don't think there's a fake card that competes with natural order. No. I don't think there's a fake card that competes with Brainstorm or Lightning Bolt. No. So I yeah. have a feeling that the fake cards don't compete. Yeah. Just just gonna play elves. 
Yeah. I mean, you, you might be right. Like I, that would be a downside. Although I, I think I would be less apt to concede a game of timeless due to seeing a fake card than I would be like historic. Yeah. I, I think that, I think there are like, there are a number of fake cards that are just so far outside the, yeah. the bounds of historic. Yeah. But like, I think the, the fake cards are not outside of the bounds of lightning bolt, brainstorm, right. natural order, blood moon, mm-hmm. like those cards. Oh man, your, your, your opponent's like, gets two triumphs and you just blood moon them. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. This means stone rain's legal, right? Yeah. Can you just play Ponza? Probably. Utopia Sprawl? Yeah. Oh, we don't have, we don't have Arbor Elf. But, like, Utopia yeah. Sprawl, um, and Mana Dorks and, like, Stone Rain Blood Moon you? Mm-hmm. Whew! Whoo-hoo! Like, well... Yeah, Welcome to magic, sucker. That's right. But it also, like, if I'm wizards, right, like, I personally have a lot of blank spots in my collection that are the cards that can't get played anywhere. Right. And if I'm wizards, I'm constantly thinking of ways to get people to Use go from having, having 200 mythic wild cards to having zero mythic wild cards. Right. And a good way to do that is to make natural order channel mm-hmm. and, you know, all these mythics playable. Yep. We made brainstorm a rare for yeah. reasons. <laughs> right. Like, shh, shut your mouth. Give me your gold wild cards, fool. Yep. Yep. So, uh, but thankfully I have that card and I got my wild cards back. There you go. Oh, and they're not going to take my, they're not going to claw my wild cards back like savages. So they're not. Um, yes. There was some stuff in this article about wild cards or whatever, but I don't think that's super important right now. Yeah. When does timeless start? Um, when does it start? Did I write it down there? Uh, I didn't. I'm, I'm de- illiterate. In December, I think. I don't, I don't see it there. Okay. Coming up soon. Uh, yeah. Modern Horizons three. Do, do, do. Yuck. Oh. December New 12th. format. Yeah, December twelfth. The in the giant picture in the article. Yep. All right. So next week. So alongside with the release of tons of Tarkir Kirk- on Magic Arena. Okay. So there you go. Yeah, I mean, if you have all these cards you can't use. They might as well. Uh... Make you uh, find ways to like make you, let you use them. Yep. So, all right. So, at an hour thirty-seven, I think we got a show. We got a show. So, if you uh, want to reach out to us on social media, Facebook, Discord, X, going to give it to you, email, whatever. All those uh, are in the description below. Hit us up. Yeah, let us know what you think. Uh, if you're looking to support the show, two ways you can do it. First is with a TCG player affiliate link, casualtryhard.com slash TCG. Surf on over, spend some money, support the show. We'd appreciate it. If you want to support us more directly, patreon.com slash casualtryhardmtg is how you can do that. Uh, You can chip a couple bucks in. You get access to our pre-show, another hour-ish of content out of us. Uh, You get access to my show notes. And when I have cool stuff to send out, I send it to the patrons. So you can put them on mailing list for that. Or if you just want to show us you care and support the show you listen to every week, you can do that as well. Um, like I said, on Patreon, patreon.com slash casual MTG. Look us up. Thanks. Yeah. All right. So with that, we'll catch you on the internet. We'll catch you on the internet.